Oh, fantastic. Oh, well, welcome. Sorry, that sounded a bit brutal. Uh, I just thought I'm, I'm dying to know who you are. And I thought, well, that's Gisela, obviously. Sorry, Gisela, you're clearly online. There you are. Okay, that's um, me. Hello. This is quite difficult, this dual tasking um, for me, obviously. Now, Gisela is going to talk about people with visual impairment and uh, using a competency-based approach, which is great. And I initially thought, oh no, Gisela should talk in January. But Gisela mm -hmm. is a wonderful linkage to the talks we're having today and the talks we're having in January. So I'm hoping with your expertise, you'll definitely also join us in January and maybe talk a little bit about some other aspects as well. Uh, but uh, I'm dying to hear what you found because I think that's a wonderful ending of the talks. After this, we'll have breakout rooms. So, sorry, Gisela, just just uh, one second of your time before people run off. So, hopefully, we'll have online breakout rooms. Where we're asking people in in groups of four, uh, around four or five, to come together and discuss, you know, whatever notes you've made. So things where I've been scribbling lots and lots of stuff where I thought, oh, we have to think about this. Don't be precious about it. It can be a brainstorm phase. We'll talk more about it in a second, but don't run off after this thinking, oh, these stupid sand pits, you know. Please stay with us and, and, and help us with your expertise. And hopefully, you know, you'll want to be enjoyed uh, joining into, into, into the projects that we're applying for, projects with MANCAP, projects with people with dementia, overall, perhaps EU projects, H2020, etc. So, um, Gisela, uh, Scott, have you still got your hand up or is that just a hand, a, a, a sort of a wandering hand that it's... It's a legacy hand which will be going legacy. down now. Great. Okie dokie. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Gisela, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. So um, let me share my screen. Um... Okay. Can you... Are you I, able to share? I don't can know. I, can, can, can you see that? Uh, not yet. Mm. yet. Um, did you email the talk to any of the speakers? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, can I share just like the... Uh... You should be able... Um, Sal, did you, uh, could you check if Gisela has presenter rights, please? Okay. I think I can only share like my my full screen not my... Oh, if you go to the bottom that little uh, green thing share screen there should hopefully yeah. uh, let me... okay oh i can do it Ooh, brilliant so so perhaps can't do it uh, uh, uh. i don't think she has she got presenter uh... i thought he had yeah um do we know why Gisela have you got it on your on your um on on uh, have you got your talk open yeah uh so if you go to the bottom and you do share screen there's a green sort of thingy there you see yeah yeah but it's just it doesn't appear anything to share just uh have, i don't know got, if... have you got it uh Okay, okay. I think it appears now. Can you see it? There you are. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Brilliant. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank no you. Worries. So, um, um, thank you, everyone. My name is Gisela. Um, I am a four-year PhD student at the University of Nottingham, and I am based in the Mixed Reality Lab, supervised by um, Joel Fisher and Stuart Reeves, who I think is in this meeting. Um, so today I'm going to give an overview of some of the work that I've been doing during my PhD, which I am currently writing up, but uh, I will present only um, a workshop approach that I think might be relevant to the conversations and discussions happening today. Um, okay, so uh, my work sits at the intersection between human computer interaction and accessibility research uh, and um, specifically focused on visual impairments, but uh, also, a lot of the work that I'm drawing on, uh, in turn, draws on for from disability studies and disability justice activism. 
uh, and is mainly concerned with uh, to what extent and how are people with disabilities included in the technology design process. Um, because there's people with disabilities who are regular or expert users of a variety of technologies, both mainstream and assistive. Um, so on the one hand, we have um, designers, especially those of mainstream technologies, that uh, do not really know about these users or how they do things. And on the other hand, we have um, specialist technologies that, although they are well-intentioned, sometimes take a deficit model to design. Uh, that is that they focus on the impairment or on what's missing, trying to replace it or substitute it, um, or technology that oftentimes do not consider the social material uh, factors involved in using them. So these are roughly um, some of the areas that I try to address with my work. Um, and as I was saying, one of the main contributions of uh, my PhD is a workshop approach that I defined and implemented throughout my studies which was focused on reflection. Uh, and the aim was to bring people together um, with and without disabilities, in my case, uh, visual impairments, from different technology backgrounds. Um, so they were users, designers, developers, researchers, who also had um, varying degrees of knowledge and accessibility. Some of them from their own lived experience and others um, from, from their work and they were also people who didn't really know anything about accessibility, but they were interested in learning about it. Um, so I brought them all together to reflect on technology, accessibility, and disability. Um, and I conducted eight workshops. Um, they were all online because of COVID. And um, all of them had two or three participants just to aid the conversation. Um, and um, these two, this uh, workshop ha ha is comprised by two main uh, components. Um, one of them is a deck of cards that I designed and defined that contain the competencies and experiences of people with visual impairments. And the other is a very small catalog of video demonstrations of visually impaired people using technology. Um, and these two materials, are heavily rooted in empirical work, um, of which I'm not going to talk a lot, but um, we have a paper on this in case you are interested. So um, just to say that this, ethnograph this was an ethnographic study in which we investigated um, technology practices of participants and through ethnomethodology, we focused on the interactional competencies of people. As I was saying, instead of focusing on the things that they cannot do or the issues that they encounter, we wanted to know how, how it was that they managed to uh, accomplish their activities regardless of their visual impairments or because of their visual impairments. Um, so uh, the first material was this, and I'm not going to go into much detail on this. Um, but I just want to show you that they, the, the deck of cards I designed, um, it has mainly uh, five categories of cards. And the first one is uh, competencies cards. Um, I guess that's what it was saying that it kind of fits a bit um, the session, the next session of acting um, because it focuses on what people can do, uh, not only on an individual level, but also on a social le level. Um, and the other uh, rest of cards are kind of add um, more layers of context, uh, like the tools they use, the activities they perform, the relations and the locations. Um, so this was um, the first material. And the second material, uh, as I said, it was a small catalog of demonstrations of technology. Uh, and this was because um, demonstrations were a pervasive phenomenon <laughs> captured during fieldwork. Um, I actually collected over a hundred of demonstrations and interesting, interestingly, I didn't collect them on purpose. It was just something that naturally emerge, emerged in my, uh, in my field work. Uh, so I have another paper, which is currently under um, minor revision. So hopefully it will be out soon or at some point. Um, but in that we analyzed in detail, what are demonstrations, uh, how they're done, how they are being done and, and what we are learning through them. 
Um, and all in all, uh, I think we are arguing that demonstrations are effective in providing accounts of real world activities as they comprise um, much more than just showing technology functionality, of which I'm going to show you um, an example in a moment. Uh, but before that, I also want to add that through this work and also through them, through the workshops, through using the, the, the demonstrations with participants, I came to realize, um, and I think this was um, really mentioned before in some of um, the previous presentations, uh, that there is a strong demo culture in disabled communities. For my participants, for my group of users, uh, they are very used to demonstrate to their peers for, for learning and for teaching, and the same way they are used to see other people demonstrated to them. Um, and as well, they consume a lot of content um, of um, online demonstrations. Um, so for example, on YouTube or specific uh, websites that create, uh, produce and share um, these demonstrations. So there is definitely a really interesting and rich source of material that is readily available online that is um, worth looking. Um, so I'm going to show you um, an example of this. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, I hope you can hear it. Uh, this is a completely blind person who um, is showing me how he uses an app, um, how he uses the camera of the app, um, the camera of the phone, sorry, for detecting light sources. Um, so we are just like in the kitchen of his house and he's showing me, me this and I hope, uh, I hope you can hear it and, and see it properly. I'm looking for the light and where it's detected. So that tells me there's a light source there. Also, if the fridge light is working, also if you turn the light on, okay. so the light is roughly there. And that helps me on a night time finding whether or not the lights have been left on. Okay, I don't so know. And I use that quite uh, often. Okay, I think I read a comment that says that it sounded okay. Oh. So, uh, yeah, if. Um, coming back to the competencies cards, um, just as an example. Um, if I were to ask you to reflect on the um, competencies that I list here in my cards, um, what competencies do you observe in the video that I just played, then um, we could say that there was definitely some auditory and tactile levels because he was um, listening to the, to the app, to the sounds and recognizing a different pitch, a different meaning on it. Um, and there's also some element of tactile um, exploration on the reaching the fridge and, and opening the door, and also a special awareness of the, of the kitchen space because um, he knew roughly where the window was and where the, the ceiling was, the, the light on ceiling and the fridge. And lastly, we can say that um, there's some sort of assistance and negotiation happening with me as an observer because he asked me to um, turn the light for him and then I kind of interrupted him at the end for um, telling him that the light was off. Um, so this is how we use the materials in the workshop. Um, and this is the rough structure of those sessions. Uh, first, I presented a small catalog, uh, as I said, of demos from which participants selected one or two clips to play and discuss. And then we use the cards to reflect on the videos played. Um, uh, just the same way that I did in this presentation. Um, and lastly, we used only the cards to reflect on other experiences of visually impaired people. Um, so I also want to say that this structure was defined in consultation with uh, visually impaired people to make it accessible. Um, of course, providing them with uh, accessible formats uh, of the materials. Uh, but also, for example, for presenting the information in a specific way, uh, like the cards 
uh, I introduce them category by category in a staggered way instead of presenting them all at once. Uh, so just to make so the, just to make the whole workshop um, more accessible for them. Um, and just to briefly talk about the outcomes, um, I think one of the main findings of the workshops um, was that the materials helped unlock participants' interactions and discussions. Um, so for example, the materials generated questions by non-disabled people, which were responded by visually impaired participants who kind of took the lead in explaining and solving doubts and kind of taking that um, teaching teaching, learning, and learning role. Um, some workshops also uh, only had the visually impaired participants. Uh, I think I forgot to mention that I aim to have at least one visually impaired participants in, participant in each of the workshops. And there were some that only had visually impaired participants. So the conversations were geared towards requesting and giving advice of technology. Um, and also across all workshops, the materials help the participants to notice things that maybe they didn't know about or never thought about before. Or conversely, uh, when they did know about these things, uh, people related to their own lived experience. So that was also interesting to see. Um, and I guess just to wrap up, I want to say that there's definitely a need for creating bridges or spaces in which disabled people have direct input and conversations about technology and in the design of technology, and that this could benefit from employing a competencies approach. Um, and lastly, just to say that I think that demonstrations are a very fruitful tool for both doing empirical research and also for prompting um, design ref reflections. And I think that that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow, that was that was excellent. That was a really great talk. And what a lovely way to wrap up the talks that we've had. Thank you so much. Um, Sal has got a talk, has got a question here. He said, you mentioned disability rights, acti activism. What was the role of social movements in your work? Would you uh, would you be able to answer that, Giselle? Yeah. Uh... I cannot see the, the questions, but um, yeah, definitely, like I was saying, um, I think what got me into that is because I, uh, a lot of the work that I draw on um, that is very recent, actually, like five years in accessibility research in HCI, it's um, increasingly looking into, um, into uh, getting involved not only the people uh -huh. but all this history all this history of disability rights and disability justice so uh definitely that's why i think it kind of matches with my view of not wanting to fix an impairment or substitute an impairment but actually accommodate people and and include them in the process and, mm -hmm. and listening to their needs and their yeah. and their wants yeah and i think that's something that's really come out of this day hasn't it is is go from user-centered design is working with people asking them what they need and how they want it because i think too much of the technology is developed by by people who have competency across all the levels but i loved your idea of looking at competencies in people who you know it needs to be much more of this what what are you able to do what can you do how can we work with you to enable you to participate and and be part of an inclusive society there was a question thanks for flying that up so i didn't see it from magnus he said what was the background for the workshop design um um uh, what do you mean like background of the of the workshop that i employed yeah what's that yes. Magnus, are you talking about yeah, I'm, 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 I'm here i can i can ask the oh, question there you yeah, are. yeah in no, the no, dark no. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Suddenly the light just disappeared. I, it, That's how I, it happens. I promised that it was uh, much brighter when I sat down. Um, no, I was just, uh, I quite like the workshop design, but I was just thinking um, uh, what inspired it. I mean, I mean, did you just make it up or did you, uh, did you actually, well, steal from somewhere or did someone else do a similar <laughs> design or, or what, what happened? Yeah. So, 
I think it's definitely inspired by um, participatory design or co-design activities. But I, I think I wasn't really keen into doing design right away. And also there was the pandemic. So it was also, I, I think it just happened to be. <laughs> um, and because I had this material from my, for my empirical work demonstrations, I really wanted to do something with it. Um, so I just used it. So I kind of, I think I kind of just uh, took a bit of inspiration from many places, but, but the whole structure was, uh, I just, I came up with it, with my, with my work, so yeah. Wonderful. I, yeah, I really like that idea of empowering people by focusing on ability rather than this concept on what can you not do, because that stigma on, you know, and, and I loved your demo. That was, that was, that's very empowering for people. I think also for perhaps for other people with uh, perceptual um, disabilities to see how somebody navigates the space using this app. That's very, very, very good. Did, did you come across that? Did that, did that come out of your, when you, when you were doing the demonstrations with people? Um, yeah, actually they, they, they show me what they normally use, what they, they regularly use. So, um, so they use this, um, this app for detecting objects and for reading, especially mm -hmm. because it detects the, the text in it translated, yeah. read, it reads it aloud. And there's definitely this uh, technologies for navigating, but uh, and they exist. But the participants that I, I encounter in my study, they they just don't feel safe using them for going around and about. Okay. So yeah, it's it's interesting as well how they rely on other people more than on the technologies sometimes. Yeah. Is it called seeing AI? Yeah, yeah, it's seeing AI. Oh, you, you know of it, Tracy. And Ahmed had a question as well. Yeah, it, uh, is. it is. Okay. So so you've you've you that app of light, that that's seeing AI. Okay. And what about your cards? I mean, they look great. So so you used them in the demo, you had these different abilities. So how did people work with that? They said, This is what I can do. So you you look you you gave people the cards. And then you said, is this something you can do? So you had a set of cards. These are my abilities. This is what I'm able to do. How, uh, how yeah, so, so the cards I defined from the first paper that I mentioned, mm -hmm. it was um, I, I used like ethnomethodology to kind of uh, identify those from the, from the field work material that I collected. And then I designed them. I, I, um, yeah, I created the cards. And I brought them to the um, to the workshop, and I, I showed it to the participants, and I I did say like reflect from this list of competencies, uh, what do you think it, it applies yeah. to you or not? 